Hey guys, and welcome to the video in another segment of Hacking Modding Monday News and Info. Today, Monday, May the 4th, 2020. Lots to cover. Again, I'm going to have to break this up into two parts because there's so much going on. For those who are new to these segments, you can look down in the description for a brief summary so you can get a better idea about what these segments are all about. Today, we're going to be covering um, the Sony systems as well as some emulation and our top 10 most pirated movies let me know what you guys think about that segment i've been doing it for the past few weeks it seems you guys like it so but i'd like to know in the comments what you think anyway let's get started lots to cover part one today part two tomorrow we're going to jump right into it with ps4 and we start off at the ps4 scene where i'm going to give out my first ever douchebag developer of the month award and this month's award proudly goes to id damon id damon check your twitter check your email check your spam box or whatever for information on how to claim your prize now i am making a video solely about this so i'm not going to spend too much time on here it'll probably come out in a couple of days i'm halfway done with it but anyway this is a final fantasy 7 remake tool which allows you to mess with the models textures maps whatever blah 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 anyway i say you but in reality i mean nobody because nobody can use this long story short you have to have a kexploit that is on 7.02 or higher in order to get this to work, which he has. He's always had an up-to-date Kexploit because he's done this in the past. He did it with Red Dead Redemption 2 here, and he did it with Spider-Man here. Now, basically, people who are on 505, even if you bought these games legitimately, you can't play them unless you're willing to sacrifice losing your 505. So when he does these things like this, especially with big time games that people really want, even if they want to play them legitimately on their 505 system, they can't. And he just wants you to know that he can. There are literally maybe a handful of people, maybe a dozen or a couple of dozen at the absolute most people on this planet who have 7.02 or higher Kexploit. So yeah, nobody is going to use this. He's just letting you know that he can play all those new updated games and you can't. And with that out of the way, let's move on. A couple of other things that have been updated uh, for the PS4, things we've already covered in the past and so we won't spend too much time on them. Both of them are located here at the Logic Sunrise site. I've used Google Translate because it's in French, but to get the links, you really don't have to use it. You could just go down to the bottom of the post and grab the links from there. First is the PS4 app lock. This is now on version 1.01, .01, and this app allows you to lock games and apps. So if you have um, little kids, you know, maybe a little brother or sister or a little son or daughter or somebody that has access to your system and you want to lock them out of specific games or specific apps, you can do that with this. This latest version allows you to use external hard drives and the pin code is also no longer saved to the game backup, which is a measure of added security. Next is an update to PS, uh, the PS4 Explorer theme maker. Now this does not allow you to make themes for the PS4 itself. This is just for you to create themes for the app itself, the PS4 Explorer app. So if you want to create themes and the avatar for the app, you can do that with this theme maker. And again, right down here is where you would get the link to download the files. And let's head on over to the Vita scene where we see our first alpha build release of a new N64 emulator. This one is called Daedalus X64. Now, before you get too excited, keep in mind this is something that is brand new, still in development. Don't expect your games to run like, you know, 100% or even 90% flawless on this thing. More on that here in a bit. But when you come here, you can check on the development progress here on the page. They have a few videos they posted showing you the development as well you know through the different stages you can also just see this thing in action with these videos down at the bottom you will get the download links but when you come here to the 
playable games tab, you will get to see which games are actually playable. Now this list has, it looks like some 20, maybe 25 games or so that are marked as playable, but we don't know what the playable guidelines are. So if a game is dropping a bunch of frames here and there, maybe it's kind of choppy or whatever, or sometimes it glitches out, but you can still play it and you can get to the end of the game. Does that make it playable? Even though for most people they wouldn't consider that playable? I, I really don't know. I don't know what the guidelines are because they're not listed anywhere. It's something you're just going to have to try for yourself. But I do know one thing. Developers of emulators are usually very laxed when it comes to what they consider a game being playable as. And as long as you can get through the game, even if it's a little bit choppy, if you have dropped frame rates, they'll consider it being playable. So again, it's just something you have to try out for yourself. All right, and next up, we come over to VitaDB, which is a place that we've visited quite often. There's quite a few things here for the Vita. There's a few things that have been either added or updated here, like a port of Heart of Darkness for the Vita, which is right there, a Connect 4 game. There's also a clone of Asteroids called Temporary Space for the Vita. PKGJ, which is something we've covered in the past, has been updated. That's a package downloader and installer for your um, modded Vita and then the Daedalus X64 we just covered that there's also a couple of other things that have been updated that have not made it here yet all right and here is one of them that do not show up there at Vita DB but has been updated and that's Vita UD CD UVC Okay, somebody remind me to send this developer a dictionary for Christmas. So what this does is it's a kernel plugin that allows your PS Vita screen to stream to your computer's monitor. There's a, a video here showing them using this. As you can see, it pretty much works virtually instantly. What happens on your Vita happens instantly on your PC's monitor. So if this is something that you'd be interested in using, make sure you read up on all the instructions, come over to the releases and get this latest version here. You can see what they've done with this update and the files you need are here. And it also explains what each file does. And we leave the Vita scene with an update to Vita Moonlight. This is pretty much the opposite of the homebrew we just covered because this one allows you to stream your PC games to your Vita wirelessly. You can control them on your system as well. This is an update 0.8.0 that adds a few new options. There's a bunch of documentation that's here to kind of help you out getting things set up. You can find the links here. There's a link to their wiki page, a link to their discord. The VPK is here as well. And there's already a bunch of tutorials written and in video format out there floating around that can help you set everything up. And now we move to the world of emulation, starting with this, a Super Mario 64 PC port. Now I know what you're saying. Oh, this is just another Mario 64 game or another, you know, homebrew or a hacked version or whatever. But here's the thing with this one. This one is special because it's a authentic PC port. And so it's been done so that it plays natively on your system. This means it does not require an emulator. Your PC will just play it like a regular game designed for Windows like any other PC games. And that is truly amazing. What's even more amazing is the way it looks. This is clearly the best rendition of this game I have ever seen. Now, getting the file, if you're interested in playing it, that's going to be tricky because even the place where I got it from 30 minutes later, the file itself was removed. The forums are policing themselves. So anytime somebody puts up some download links, they're getting removed. So yeah, um, what I can do is just let you know that the, the file itself is just one file. It's a Mario.exe file. It's only about 26 megabytes, maybe 25 point something. I can maybe put the MD5 checksum 
up for it down in the description because when I ran the XE on Virus Total, it came out 100% squeaky clean. So if you plan on getting it, good luck finding it. It's out there hopefully somewhere and you're able to get it. But yeah, if you're a fan, it's definitely something that's worth playing because it looks really good. Now I know the Switch is supposed to be coming out with this. Nintendo said they're gonna release like a 35th anniversary of this game or 25th anniversary, whatever it is um, later on. So uh, this year, so we'll see, but I doubt it's going to look this good. And people who have played it already said it plays absolutely flawless as well. And next up, we have something that I don't think I've really covered all that much because I was waiting for it to improve and get a bit better. And it's definitely gotten to that point. And this is RPC S3. It is an open source PlayStation emulator for Windows, Linux and BSD. You can grab the downloads from here. You can type in the title of a game here or the game's ID to check out its compatibility. You can also just click on the compatibility tab and check out the list. There's over 3000 games that are listed here and almost 60% of them are playable, at least by their guidelines. You can also click on the playable tab right there just so that it displays the playable games. I don't think you can download them from here, but you can check out the game's ID. You can search them here by titles as well as here to check to see if the one you are looking for is playable. So this has definitely gotten to the point where they've made it so that, you know, the Playable games at least look really good and seem to be playing really well. Let me just show you this one here. Here in this video, they're demonstrating the V blank feature where when you crank it up, it cranks up the frame rates of the game. Here is Nino Kunai the White Witch running at 30 frames per second. Then they crank up the V blank feature, which can be done on the fly, and it jumps to around 100 FPS and it just looks great. I mean, it looks like a current gen game, like a current gen indie game or something. So yeah, if you want to check it out, the links to everything will be in the description. And lastly for emulation, we have an update to CMU, which is the Wii U emulator for PC. We've talked about this before in the past. So I won't spend too much time on it. This latest release is 1.18 point to see you can come here as usual click on the change log click on the latest details so you can see what they've done in this latest version and again no surprise this update is pretty extensive these developers uh, for this CMU emulator really absolutely love their video games they are constantly updating this and you can tell with the quality because hands down this is the best Wii U emulator out there and we will end this segment with the top 10 most pirated movies of the week, according to TorrentFreak.com for the week ending May the 3rd, 2020. Coming in at number 10 is a new movie to the list, The Call of the Wild. At number 9 is The Gentleman. At number 8 is another movie that makes its debut on the list, The Lodge. Gretel and Hansel is at 7. Bad Boys for Life is at number 6. Bloodshot is at number 5, Fantasy Island is at 4, Birds of Prey makes its solid debut at number 3, at number 2 is Sonic the Hedgehog which makes the biggest jump, this one was at number 9 last week, it's now at number 2, and for the second week in a row, Extraction holds the top spot at number 1. The top 3 movies here with the highest IMDb rating are The Gentleman at 8.0, Bad Boys for Life at 7.1, and Extraction at 6.9. Although there are a couple of other movies that are very close to that. Um, the Call of the Wild is at 6.8, Sonic is at 6.6, .6, and Birds of Prey is at 6.2, and Gretel and Hansel is at 6.1. And that is going to do it for today, guys. Don't forget to stay tuned for part two tomorrow. You know I appreciate you watching. And if you found anything here informative, useful, helpful, entertaining, or you just want to throw some love or appreciation to the channel, you know the best way to do any of those things is just to smash that like button. Maybe subscribe also if you haven't already. Much love going out to everybody. Be careful out there, guys. Be safe, but have fun, and we will see you on the next one.